To the God that had blessed us and kept us, I pray that everyone is doing well tonight. Uh, we realize this is the day the Lord has made. Our Bible says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're here for again for another Bible study Wednesday. We call it a uh, walk through the word Wednesday. And we know that as God has blessed us, uh, we have an opportunity to give him the honor, the praise. Uh, let's continue to pray for government, for our churches, uh, for all entities that will help to make our lives so much better. Amen. I want to just begin our Bible study tonight, old familiar passage of the hymn. The hymn writer says in Numbers 112, Guide me, O thy great Jehovah, through this barren land. I am weak, thou mighty, hold me with thy powerful hand, bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Come on, right where you are. Help me lift this old familiar hymn. Guide me, oh, that great Jehovah Oh, 
the church said, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah, I do. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up tonight, but we know that there's no God like you. You, God, and you alone has guided us safely uh, from the waking of our eyes to see the brightness of a new day. And also the going down of the sun, you have brought us. You kept us, God, in perfect peace, God. You kept uh, the enemy away from us. And here we are now, God, we are here interested in being fed from a matter from above, God. We're interested because, God, our souls are thirsty. We need you, God, to fill us like you've never filled us before. God, tonight, we pray, Father, that you would give us an opportunity to open now your word to receive, God, that which you have in store for us. Thank you, God, for those Thank who you. are visiting us online and those who came with us in person. God, that ever will decrease and you increase. You will get the glory for every word that proceeds out of the mouth of this, your servant. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 God has blessed us again. Good to see everybody. On this, I am wonderful. I am wonderful. Uh, we're meeting with you. We're meeting online, and we are blessing God for everything He's done. I want to get started tonight. Uh, we stopped last week talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and what we defined last time, Skinny, that we met. We talked about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That power that we talked about is what. Greek writer called dunamis. That means dynamite. That same spirit uh, that resides in us is what we believe is that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And because of that, if that power that raised Jesus from the dead was powerful enough to get him to conquer the grave and also to get the victory over death, and I share with you tonight, we too still have that same power that resides in us. But not only do we have the power, but we recognize from our last discussion, we also have his presence. That means because we have a spirit that we receive when we said to him, Lord, uh, I, I want you to be a part of your life. I want to confess with my mouth, believe in my heart. We receive the spirit of God based on the fact that God has indeed given us a spirit. Tonight, tonight, I want to share with you that's another characteristic of the Holy Spirit that also guides us, uh, amen, when it comes to our prayers. Now, this becomes important because we also we oftentimes believe that prayer is essential for every Christian. We, we, we've heard throughout the text of the Bible that the man should always pray without ceasing. Prayer is not an option. It, it is for some of us as Christians, uh, it, it is just what we do. We pray in season, we pray out of season, we pray in good days, we pray in bad days, we pray with a little pain in our body, and we also pray uh, hopefully when things are going well. But I want to share with you that the Holy Spirit can also aid us as it relates to our prayer life. Why is this important? Well, when it comes down to it, there are times uh, that we have difficulties praying. You, you may say to me, preacher, no, that's not me. I've been in church all my life, and uh, the minute I hit my knees, I already know how to do it. Maybe that's not all our testimony, because there are perhaps times in all of our life when praying the right prayer can be difficult, when, when we have to make tough decisions, when we lose people in our lives, uh, sometimes the words don't come out the way we want them to. Sometimes, you know, those decisions will weigh on our heart so much that, that we don't know, uh, God, if this is your will or not. 
And I want to suggest to you that if you contemplate this question, think about a time when it became difficult to pray. Not only did it become difficult to pray, but we have to also explore why was it difficult for us. Uh, a lot of us are, are Bible-toting, believers, Christians, sang in the choir, worked in every ministry. But can I share with you, we all will share a commonality of, of the hardness, of the difficulty it is that sometimes uh, when we have to pray to God, it's hard. Amen. Anybody with me on that? So I want to share with you by way of introduction. If you will, for those who are joining with us, we have an introduction. And in that introduction, it talks about the Bible. The Bible reminds us, here it is, that, that we should always pray without ceasing. However, sometimes it becomes difficult. Stay with me, y'all, at times. Even as Christians, we are we well, oftentimes we learn or, or to have those moments where it becomes difficult. A struggle yeah. to pray. <laughs> and even at certain times, at certain moments in our lives, we deal with certain elements that make prayer struggle. What are those things? Remember we talked about sometimes our experiences in life can, can, can leave us with a struggle to pray. Sometimes when we lose people, when sometimes when we deal with some hurts, <laughs> amen, ain't nothing like being hurt by the people you love. Yeah. Let's go a little further. Ain't nothing like a little church hurt. Amen. God, they supposed to be holy. They supposed to be saved. But I can't believe they would do this to me. Sometimes it's hard when we're hurt. But let's go a little further. Sometimes when sin is knocking at the door, we, 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 we oftentimes find a struggle when it comes to saying, God, I, I need this, but I know my life is not lined up yet. And I know you said you don't dwell in unclean places, but, but Lord, I need this prayer to reach your ear. <laughs> Y'all with me tonight. But, but then sometimes even the tough decisions that we have to make in life, we, we will find that, that sometimes prayers are hard to get through. Hmm. I, I want to argue tonight that, that one of the things that we have to do is we have to realize what prayer is. Many people don't realize that the miracle of prayer is not the answer. I need you to see this tonight. Mm -hmm. But in the process, it is what we've got to look at. It is that process that the Spirit helps us through. Amen. Mm -hmm. that, that process that the Spirit helps us through our prayer life, here it is, become closer to our creed. We gotta realize the Bible constantly shares with us, they'll ask for what you will and it shall be done unto you. Yeah. We've heard the scripture that said, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. We've heard Psalms 1 talk about blessed is, is the one that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, but 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 they delight in the Lord. We've heard the scriptures. Yeah. What happens when heaven sometimes goes quiet, sometimes when we don't know the words. Sometimes we don't know uh, if, if what we're praying is in God's will mm -hmm. or is in my will. Mm -hmm. I, I want to suggest to you tonight that we've got to understand the Spirit helps the process of prayer. Amen. And because of that, I want to share with you that, that we've got to know that, that, that sometimes because we don't know the purpose of prayer, oftentimes we find ourselves not knowing how or, or, or when to get the message to him. Can I share with you tonight, as we look a little closer, if we think about the purpose of prayer. Uh, there's, a, there's a scripture, Philippians chapter 4 and 6. I, I pray you got your Bibles tonight. Uh, grab them, grab them. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, there's a passage there uh, that, that Paul starts to talk to the people of the church of Philippi. And, and notice his words as he talks to them. He says simply in verse 6, uh, be careful for nothing. But in everything, not some things, I need y'all to see that. Not some things, but in everything. Look at the King James Version. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's interesting when we start to look at it, we realize that he says, be anxious. Some translations says, about anything, 
But in everything, my prayer, so get to thank you. Let your request, let whatever you're going through, let whatever you're requiring, whatever is hurting, whatever has caused you uh, hurt and pain in your life, he says, make a request to God. <laughs> the reason this becomes important is because uh, we, we, we as Christians know that our God sits high and looks low. We, we've heard our scriptures as it says that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and everything belongs to him. So if everything belongs to him, even the things in the hands that, that we need God to operate in, why am I going to man when God has everything I need? Every time. Why, why am I trying to fix things that only God can fix? Why am I trying to straighten out hopes that only God can straighten out? So Paul says in the church of Philippi, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. But in everything that we need, everything we require, prayer, supplication, let your request, this is prayer, guys, be laid on God. This becomes important because once we understand the purpose of our prayer, then we can realize that there are certain times and certain moments that making our requests known to God is hard to do. Because sometimes, look again, being anxious, being stressed out, frustrated, can cause us to sometimes have our prayers cut short. Amen? And sometimes it's hard. It's hard when you're mad at folks. <laughs> it, it, it's hard when you're stressed out, frustrated. It's hard when you're disoriented. It's hard when, when you're disenfranchised sometimes to make your requests to God. Now, this is where this is why I believe the Spirit of God uh, operates. Now, when we look at the outline tonight, prayer is important. We believe this. It's an important part of our Christian life because here it is for it is the way we communicate with the Lord and praise him. So when I praise Sister Kendrick, I'm saying I am now trying to get a message to God. In other words, here it is for us. We, we cannot operate in the heavens without prayer. Mm -hmm. We cannot ask God for what he can do without prayer. So once we learn how to communicate with the Lord, here it is, a form of our praise is our communication. I wouldn't have a God I couldn't talk to sometimes. Amen. That I couldn't communicate Amen. and feel sometimes. And when we start to look at it, we realize that many people believe that prayer is only about asking God, here it is, for things. But can I tell you, we start to look at prayer. Prayer is not focusing on a magical gene. Can I tell you, God is not a lack. You remember the movie Aladdin? Back back in the day when you when you when you had a Latin, uh, if, if you if you rub the lamp a few times, uh, the Latin genie would come out and grant you your wishes. Yeah. Can I tell you, heaven is not a lamp, and God is not a genie. Yeah. Far too many times we want to ask God for everything we wish, and notice God is not a genie. <laughs> but can I also tell you that God is not a weak God? Who can be controlled by your prayers. God, if you do this, then I'll do that. God, if you heal this, God, if you pay my bills, I'll go to church. No, we got to be careful. Because when we start to try to bargain with God. When we say to God, God, I'm going to give you an ultimatum. Mm, this is not what prayer is. Prayer is our opportunity to communicate with God. And to say to God, God, I need you. To help me to fulfill my purpose in this life. I want to share with you when we start to look a little further. Prayer is not only a magic genie. It's not a way of controlling God. But let's go a little further. It's about asking God for what we need. Now, here's the thing. When we start to look at that prayer, can I share with you? This ain't on your outline. Can I throw this in for free? When we start to look at prayer, can I share with you what prayer is not? We've already talked about this. He's not a magic genie. He's not a weak Jesus. He's not a weak God. But can I tell you, we also got to be careful that we don't allow our prayers to make us or help us to be a bargaining chip with God. And my granddad would always say, you can't box with God. Your arms are not long enough. Oh, right. and, 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 and here it is, sometimes we want to bargain with God uh, through our prayer life and say, God, if you do this, I'll do that. 
God, God if, if, if I put my money on the table, then you should you should be able to, to pour out that new house. Yeah. Amen. God, God, God if, 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 if I smile at church, maybe, maybe you're going to send me that boo and bang. I realize God, God is not a God that we bargain with. Right. So we can't use our prayers as a bargaining chip with God. But also we got to realize that, that we cannot make demands on God through our prayers. Amen. God, you need to do this. God, you need to heal this. God, you, look, you got to realize that, that you're not all powerful. <laughs> and because you're not all powerful, you can't make God do I don't care how many times you get on your knees and start crying and praying and throwing fits and shouting. You, if it's not in God's will, you can't make God Amen. do anything. Prayer is not putting demands on God. But then thirdly, uh, prayer is not only asking God for things. I've learned in life that, that when you grow up in, in Christ, you don't always spend all your prayers asking God for his hand. It's the hand of God that brings blessings in your life. But then when you start asking him not only for the essence of who he is, but you ask him to be a part of your life. So when we start to ask God only for things, you got, you got a crowd that, that they, they keep God on the shelf. And, and, and the minute the bills start to be due, then we learn how to pray. Yeah. The, the, the minute I have to be in the hospital, then we somehow find relief. Y'all don't talk to me minute. But the minute, the minute I, I, I start having a relationship, bro, now all of a sudden I want to go to church. Yeah. I, I want to talk to God about what I'm going through. Can I tell you, you got to realize only asking God for things is not prayer. Yeah, Look, right. let me go a little further. Uh, also, uh, praying is not therapeutic. You know, some people, they get this uh, mindset where they're, mm, mm, and, and now all of a sudden we make it noise and closing our eyes. Prayer is not therapeutic. It's, it's not, here it is for us, a, a meditation with God. <laughs> Y'all will talk to me in a minute. Uh, but then let's go a little further. What is prayer now? Prayer is it, not bothering God <laughs> and, and, and taking up his time. Because see, some of us, we don't want to go to God. God, God don't have time for my little problems. God, God doesn't have time for my for, for my complaints. And uh, No, here it is. God has not slept no slumber since Adam and Eve. Say it in the God. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, God doesn't have a time. God is not like man who tell you to make appointments. See me. God said, no, that's not me, Eric. You got it confused. You don't you don't need an appointment to call on God. You, you don't you don't need a man to uh to, to Facebook him and get on his appointment schedule, get on God's agenda. No, God is always available. Always. You can't look at prayer as being bothersome to God and that God ain't got time for me. But also we got to realize that we cannot use prayer as a way to control God. Because I found that sometimes uh, we we only want to operate when we think that we're in control. God, I, 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 I need you to do this, God. God, I can't go to church until this happens. God, this, you know, and so we want God to move things, but on your time. Yeah. To make you convenient. Can I tell you, that's not prayer. Our task is to understand what we need to do. And then lastly, it's not a way of showing off our spirituality before others. You, you, you know, that there's, a, there's a, a scripture in the Bible that talks about uh, two men that went to the temple to pray. One who, 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 who began to talk about all the things he had. And he looked over and he saw uh, this individual and said, I thank God I'm not like him. Tax collector. His prayer was only a show of it. it was not a sincere prayer. It was not a prayer that communicated with God. It was just part of the show. And I found sometimes he bailed too many times. Uh, whether we're in the church or not, we, we, we fall in love with the show of prayer more than we fall in love with the substance of our prayer. And, and, and too often times we got folk that come to church and, and I hate to say it, we know every word they're going to say. <laughs> we, we know how long the prayer goes. We don't know if they're going to fly. We don't know if y'all going to talk to me in a minute. Because, again, we, 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 we've made prayer a part of the show. And because of that, people think you're spiritual because you pray a lot. Ooh, 
People think you're spiritual because you can sing the verses of your prayer. People think you're spiritual because here it is. You, you just look like you pray. You're all deep and stuck with your prayer. But can I tell you, we, we, once we figure out what prayer is not, then we can start focusing on why it is so important that we communicate with God, but not only communicate with God, but that we're communicating so that our prayers are being answered. Amen. 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 Because it is one thing for me to spend all night in prayer, and it does not reach the ear of God. That we can be in here in church on Sunday morning, and we can pray for 30 to 40 minutes, and has nothing that we said reach the ear of God. What is it going to take for us to, 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 to deal with that? I want to share with you that we as, as Christians are not the only ones that struggle. But I suggest to you tonight that even Jesus struggled with prayer. When we look at John, John's gospel, John chapter 12, verse 23, here is Jesus saying, my soul is troubled. <laughs> uh, he, he begins to say, uh, what shall I say to my father? Save me from this hour. For this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. When we look at it, we look at it tonight, we're seeing that, that in the midst of, of him going to the Garden of Gethsemane, it is here that we find him struggling. Now, wait a minute now. Jesus, who is God the Son, is struggling with prayer. Huh. Jesus, who did nothing before he prayed, is now struggling with prayer. Can we talk about this, y'all? He's looking into the uh, the cup, the bitter cup, and, and he has a struggle with God because he's trying to adhere to the will of God but here we realize it's a struggle. It's bitter. Some preacher said he looked in the cup and he saw your sins and mine. He saw how, how torrid the world was. He saw how, how we struggle to stay together and get along with you. He said, Lord, if this cup can pass from me, even Jesus had trouble with prayer. Let me go a little further tonight because when we think about it, our human struggles Jesus was in his humanity. Can I tell you tonight, Jesus was 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 what was 100% deity, but he was also human. And so the humanity of him struggled. And when we look at the humanity of him, we realize that that here uh, he struggled with prayer. He knew that he had come to the earth to be the all-sufficient atonement for our sin, but even in the midst of that, we find a struggle. Now, you may say to me, wait a minute now, how, how and why is Jesus struggling? Well, if we look at the text, we realize that Jesus' struggle came because he's in his final week. Watch this, of life. Even agonized, according to Matthew 26 and 42, he's agonized. The word agonized means he's distraught. He's struggling. Huh. And, and because he's struggling with this decision, Luke says that he was at a level of anguish, and watch this, where sweat came like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Now, I don't know about you, but that's 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 a real struggle yes. when it comes yes. to prayer. But we realize that even in the midst of his struggle, he still was able to say to God, not my will, but thy will be done. But can I tell you, even before he got to that point, he found himself struggling. Let me go a little further tonight because I believe that in that struggle, this is why it's so important to have the Spirit of God in us. Because when we start to look at it, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Now, here's what I'm trying to get to you. Yes, Jesus struggled with prayer. And watch this. And so do we when it comes to our burdens or our Willingness to intercede even for others. When it comes to our ability to say to God, God, my heart is broken. God, my mind is confused. When we take, uh, when we start to look at it, we can take heart in the time of struggle that we have the spirit, watch this, that helps us in our weaknesses. Yeah. When I don't know what to pray for. When, when my body is tired and my mind seems to be going through depressed moments, 
there's a spirit in us that's there to help you in your struggles. So tonight, can I share this with you? Because even when we think about it, can I share with you? According to Paul, Romans 8, can I give you this? Romans 8 and 26. Uh, here, is, here is where I want to take it. Romans 8 and 26. Uh, because it, it is here that, that Paul began to show us what it means to have a life in the spirit. <laughs> I know we don't talk about a lot in the Baptist church. We, we, we say that's Pentecostal stuff. That's church of God. But can I tell you that we in the Baptist church, we have a spirit also <laughs> that resides in. Now, you may say that we're a preacher. I don't run like them. But you still have a spirit in you. You may say, well, preacher, that, that, that we, 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 don't, we don't act like the church of God in Christ. We don't act like Pentecostal. But can I tell you, you have a spirit in you that does help you in your weaknesses. How do I know? Because let's go into Romans. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 26. Uh, look, look, let's look again. Let's look again at, at what it's saying to us. Uh, notice, notice here, verse 26. And, and, and I want to share with these good Baptist people that, that you do have a spirit of God that operates, and if it makes you run, run. <laughs> if it makes you shout, shout. Whatever you need to do, if it makes you cry, because again, the same spirit that resides in others is the same spirit that resides in you. You got to sometimes let go and say, Spirit, have your way. <laughs> my, my. Look, look again at Romans 8 and 26, and it says, Likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weakness. But we do not know what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself, remember we talked about it's not a thing, it's not a manifestation, it, it's not an it, but it is a he. So Paul says that the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. But notice what happens in the sea clause. Now he searches the heart knows that the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Let's dissect it a little bit. Notice what, what Paul said, first of all, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Here, here is what he's saying, that, that when we are weak, when, when we don't know how we're going to get out of the situation, uh, the Spirit knows exactly how and when and what we need through our prayers. In other words, we believe that God himself through the Holy Spirit is making intercessions to us. Now, notice what happens here. How does that work? Well, the Spirit helps us by expressing what we call groanings. In other words, we always look at the term groanings uh, as it relates to spiritual gifts of the tongue. But what we are not understanding is that a groaning is an expression. It's a deep groaning within us. It is uh, the Spirit's ability to articulate when you can't talk what you need. It becomes an interpreter to God. Amen. If you've ever been around someone who uh, speaks a foreign language, in, in order for the clear idea of what that person needs, they need an interpreter. <laughs> they need someone who can say the right words that will get what they need. Oh, y'all gonna walk with me here. And what the Spirit of God does is he becomes your interpreter to God. You may say, God, I, I didn't need to feel better. But the Spirit said, no, he, she need more than that. She, 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 she needs some folk to leave her alone at her job. You may say, to them, well, Lord, I'm about to give up. He said, no, that's not what, that's what I'm about to pray. You need to pray to God. But the Spirit intercedes on your behalf, and he knows what you need. So, according to what Paul said, that the Holy Spirit helps us, intercedes for us, so that the perfect will of God will be expressed in us. How does the Spirit know? Well, according to what Paul said, he searches our hearts. Ooh, that's it. With us. Now, now, what does that mean to us? He knows what's in your heart. The Bible says, out of the heart comes the issues of life. So, here it is. While you may be able to not be able to talk about the folk that bother you, he knows what's in your heart. <laughs> You may not be able to talk about that church member rolling their eyes at you, but he knows. No. <laughs> you may not even be able to talk about how jacked up your finances is, but he knows no. because he searches our hearts and watch this. He knows how to help us. Yeah. 
not only knows how to help us, but he's able to guide our prayers. Here's the last part. According to the will of God. So when we start to look at it, we realize that, that we have a Holy Spirit that's making intercession, that's, that, that is there to advocate, that's there to interpret, to intercede with us, even when we don't know what to pray about. Amen. So, so when we start to look at it, we look at the Spirit as being uh, an intercessor for us. Let me share this with you. The Holy Spirit with, dwells within us to help us in our prayers. When you don't know what to pray, the Spirit of God intercedes. And here it is, even when we're weak, we may not know exactly how we should pray, but here it is, God himself through the Spirit makes intercession for us. Let's go a little further tonight, because not only do we see the Spirit's role as becoming an intercessor for us, but we also go a little further tonight to know that the Spirit also is there to help us to deal when it comes to our prayers being effective. Now, you may say, well, preacher, now I've been praying since I love little girl, little boy. I, I know the model prayer. I, I, I know how, I know all the words to say. I know how to make my voice modulate at certain points. I got you. But we're talking about effective prayers. Prayers that reach the ear of God. And not only do they reach the ear of God, but then God allows your prayers to be answered. Now, this becomes the thing that we think about because what the Holy Spirit does, it helps us communicate beyond our ability to work all things for good. Because what the Holy Spirit does, it, it steps in the way because sometimes we tell God, God, I, I, I want to have that, that half a million dollar house. I'm praying about it. But then the Spirit of God knows that, that, that you only have room for a trail. <laughs> Y'all talk to me. God, I, I, I need the BMW X5. But God knows you have Volkswagen money. Yeah. So we got to realize that the inner spirit that we have within us, it works all things for good and to see through the glorification. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we're praying, God, 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 uh, if you don't mind, take that person, get that person fired. <laughs> God is saying, no, 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 no. I've just got to help you to deal with that person. Right. Because eventually, uh, through your spirit and your kindness, I'm going to make your enemy become your friend. So we got to realize that, that the more we begin to feed the spirit of God, the more it begins to impact our decisions, impact how we do things, because now our prayers that reach the ear of God are now the prayers that work things out for good. <laughs> Y'all talk to me here. God ain't in the casting down business. I know some of y'all want to get rid of folk, but can I tell you, God works things out for good. <laughs> my, my, my. And that's what the Spirit does. It teaches us how to pray, how to bring about good in our prayer. Amen. Let's go a little further here. We, we can count on him to make our prayers effective because you got to realize if we're praying for God's goodness, if we're praying for things to be glorified in and of God, then God can bring the effectiveness of our prayers to the forefront. How many of us have prayed some things, some crazy stuff? <laughs> and you're glad now that God didn't answer your prayers. Don't talk to me. Don't, don't, don't fool me. I know some of us, Lord, you get rid of that one. And God send me this one. God give me back that one. He wasn't no good, but I, but I wanted him, Lord. <laughs> God knows, God knows, God knows <laughs> how, how the Spirit can make our prayers effective. Let's go a little further tonight. Let's go a little further. I'm trying to get y'all out of here. Uh, here. Here is the question tonight I want to just pose to you. How do we pray within the Father's will? Ooh. I asked ask the 12 o'clock crowd the same question. How do I know what God's will is? I, I, I know that, that if I'm praying in God's will, God will answer. But how do I know what God's will is? Ooh. How do I know what, what, what his will is for my situation, for, for my children, for my finances? How do I know God's will? Let's go a little further. Uh, 
because when we look at, can I take you to first job? First job, uh, and, and, and this becomes powerful to me. I, I read it this morning, and I had to look at it a second time, and I said, okay, I got it now. This whole time, I'm, I'm, I'm being my, 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 I'm standing up, my, my knees are hurting. <laughs> and God says, every year, you, if you really think about it, uh, uh, when we learn how to pray in the will of God, you don't have to stay on your knees all night. Ooh, you don't miss it. When you learn how to pray God's will, you, you, don't, you don't have to keep asking God every day for the same thing. Oh. Let, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, first job. First job. When I think it's chapter 5, uh, let me get you in verse 14, because I, I think this is going to bless us tonight uh, as we get ready to get out of here in a few minutes. First John. First John chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, when we talk about praying as Christians, look what it said. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according here it is, all, to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Wait a minute, John. John, John, this confused me because I'm, I'm trying to get my breakthrough. I, I'm trying to get my finances back in place. And you keep talking about whatever we pray in his will. Let, let's look at it again. Because John has developed the idea of confidence. The very word confidence means I trust, I believe. In him. So, so Paul says that, that once we believe in the Son of God, and, and, and then not only do we believe in him, but, but the very word confidence means that we have confidence that when I pray to him, he's going to answer my prayers. But, but wait a minute now. How does this work? Paul says that if we ask anything <laughs> according to his will, he hears us. Here's that question again, Sister Kenny. If I ask anything according to his will, what is his will for my life? Well, when we think about it, we, we see the purpose of prayer and the secret power of prayer. It is to ask, to ask anything. Can I tell you, there's nothing that, that, that is off limits with God. I, I know God, I know what the doctor said. I, I don't even need to ask God for that. The Bible says, ask anything. <laughs> God, I know my credit jacked up. Uh, ain't no hope for it. He says, ask anything. God, I know this child, he's been wayward. He's been locked up. Uh, ain't nothing I can do with him. The Bible says, ask anything. Watch this. According to his will. Now, now this is important. And once having so asked to have the assurance that he hears us. Now, again, let, let's, let's focus on the term according to his will. I tell you, it is easy for us to, to only be concerned with our will before God. Because we already know that. We know what we want God to do. God, I need this now. God, I want that now. God, I need you to do this. That's our will. Right. But when we think about it, uh, to have what we call a confidence in God, we have to realize that God wants us to see and discern his will. How do we know his will? Through his word. Oh, y'all missed it. How do I know what God's will is? I know it because it's in his word. And the more I read the word of God, here it is, and to pray his will into action. You said in your word that by your stripes I'm healed. You said in your word that you shall supply all of my needs. You said in your word that I'll be blessed in the Lord and highly favored. You said this, God. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. here it is. It yeah. is the mind of God. Every time we read our Bibles, we are reading the mind of God. Yeah. Oh, y'all got it now. Whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, I, I am reading God's letters. Yeah. I'm reading his mind. And if I really want my prayers to be effective, I've got to say to God what he said to me. You said this, God. You said if I just love my enemies. <laughs> you said, God, that you will make my enemies my footstool. When you know what the will of God is because you read his word, you're coming to church, you're prayer, and because of that, what the spirit of God does, it keeps reminding you of what the word of God says. 
And the more you are reminded of what God's word said, the more your prayers are faith. Yeah. So you got to understand that too often times we're talking about we're praying, but we ain't got none of God's word in our prayer. Ooh, and you keep telling me, I don't know why God ain't did it yet. Well, God is waiting on you yeah. to open your Bible and to figure out, because there are some things in this Bible that God is just not going to do. Uh -huh. So so because he's just not going to do it, why you keep asking God for something he already said he ain't going to do? <laughs> Y'all going to talk to him in a minute. So, so again, when we start to think about it, we, we realize, we ask the question, what is your will? Our desire as Christians must always be to pray within the Father's will. Now, here it is for us tonight. The Father's will include all that is beneficial, all that is good for us personally, all that is beneficial and good for all of the children. When I get to a certain point and I'm saying, God, let your will be done. Okay. Jesus taught it to us. When, when he said that, he was able to get up and do what God said. And even though we may look at the cross and say, look, uh, God's will was painful. But here it is. The glory came after the cross. <laughs> He's sitting at the right hand of God because he was willing to pray God's will be done. And God not only allowed him to finish his task on earth, but here it is. He's sitting at the right hand of God. Got to share with you tonight we, we, when we learn that, that, that God's will, because his plan is greater than our ability to understand. That's why tonight you need the Spirit of God because you're not going to always know everything in every 66 book. <laughs> you're not going to know everything uh, as it relates to whether this is, I find that in the New Testament, whether I, I find that in the Old Testament. I, I, I know y'all good Bible reading folk, but every now and then, <laughs> you need that Spirit of God to help you to pray God's will. Oh, no. no. This is why, this is why I believe that if we're not careful about COVID, uh, we, we, it, it will weaken us spiritually. And why do I say that? Because uh, while it is that, that a lot of folks are not coming uh, in our sanctuary, uh, I believe that most of them ain't reading their Bible either. So when we're praying, we're praying for God to, to release COVID, but are we praying in his will? We're praying to God to bring things back to normal, but are we praying God's will? Y'all see what I'm going to do? Because there are some things we don't understand, but it's in the will of God. Because COVID may have been painful and a struggle for us, but it may have been a way of God getting us back to holiness. Again, we don't understand it until the Spirit starts to reveal to us. And this is why it's so important that, that we have the Spirit of God operating. Because when we talk about what is your will, here it is. You will never know it until you get into God's Word. And the more you get into God's word, you will know what his will is. And when you start to get on your knees, and you start asking God for healing, when you start getting on your knees, telling God, God, you said I'll be the head and not the tail. When you start getting on your knees, and you start reminding God what his word says, okay, then you can have effective plans. So as, as we talk about it, can I tell you that uh, we, we got to realize that, that, that praying God's will is the key. I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, praying God's will is being honest with him. And not only being honest with him about what we want in prayer, also surrendering our lives and the outcome of our prayers to him. Why is this important? Because in wanting our lives to align with God's will more than our own desires. I want to share with you tonight as we're getting ready to pack up and get out of here, that when you start to allow your life to line up with God's will. Here it is for us. Then you can have more effective prayer life. Then when you go to God with confidence and say, God, I know you're going to hear this prayer. God, I know you're going to offer. I know you're going to move this. God, I know you're going to heal my body. Far too many times we let the devil get in. He keeps telling you what God ain't going to do. But here's the thing for us. Kendrick, when you start to look at God's word, the Bible said God is not slack concerning his promise. And if God said it, you can count on it. Because every now and then, we got to have one of those Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego mindset. Even if he don't, ooh, I know that he can. Even if he can't, even if he don't heal me, I know he can. Even if I know he don't pay out my bills, I know he can. Because here it is. We've got to learn what the will of God is. 
Because sometimes the will of God may not be what you want. When we know who God is, we know he has the power to do it because we have tried it. We got confidence. We believe that he can do it. But here it is for us. The Bible says we still got to ask. And God will reveal to us what his will is. That's where we are tonight. That's where we are. When this happens, I'm going to leave you here. We can have confidence in whatever we are asking because we are operating out of his will and not I will own. I want to leave that with you tonight. Learn how to operate in his will and not your own. Because tonight, uh, as, as we start to deal with whatever we're dealing with, I, I want to just encourage people. I want to challenge you that when we start to learn about what prayer is, when we start to line our lives up, uh, life can be easy when we take these burdens to our master. Mm -hmm. you know, as songwriters said, I cannot bear these burdens alone. <laughs> That is why God gives you the spirit. You don't have to bear them by yourself. I ain't got nobody to talk to. Yes, you do. That's a spirit that resides in you. And, and, and Grandma would say he walks with me. Yeah. He talks with me. Yeah. He tells me that I am no. his own. And the joy of the Lord <laughs> becomes my strength <laughs> because he's with me. I want to leave right there. And I pray that as you bow your ears and you get ready to leave, Father, we bless you tonight for all that you've allowed us to see and hear. God, for your word, for your glory, for your peace that, God, you and you alone have given us. Tonight, God, we just continue to pray for our nation. We continue to pray for those in the hospital. We continue to pray, God, for the church doors to open safely for those who need to be back on board again. God, every pastor that makes the decision tonight to get back uh, in fellowship with you in their Amen. sanctuary. God, we pray for them right now. Give them the spirit of guidance, wisdom. Amen. Lord, we just continue to pray for the great union folk. Yes. God, that you will begin to bring us from a remnant back into our sanctuary. God, safely, that we may come in not the same way we left out. Yes. That God, that we will come in, God, changed, renewed, and revived. Ready to do all we can to follow your will. Yes. God, tonight, dismiss us from this place. Never from your sight. But is it your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. All of God's children said, Amen. Let everybody say amen. Let everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Amen.